happy and excited to be in the house of the Lord. Okay. So you, will you please stand with us? It's a long time I did this introduction, but I'll try my best. And so uh, for those joining us online, you're welcome. Um, it's always a delight to worship with you. And before we go into a time of praise, shall we say a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for this opportunity to come before your house and praise and worship you and listen to your word. It's our prayer that may you come and inhabit in our service. Speak to each and every one of us and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king of Bible king who shakes the whole in holy thunder and leave us breathless in now and wonder the king of glory the king of Bible King. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you will bear my cross. You lay down your life. I sing for all that you've done for me. Who bring out chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The king of glory, the king of glory. Rules the nation with truth and justice, shines like the sun, and all of his brilliance. The king of glory, the king of Bible King. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love. That you will take my place, that you will bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I will be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me.
I sing for all oh, that you've done for me. Yes, that was great. <laughs> Looking forward to the rest. A warm welcome to everyone. Um, it's good seeing you here. Is there any new visitors today that this is your first day today in church, in Shafar Church? Would you be so kind to put up your hand? No one, no one, no one, no one. Great. Well, it's not great, but it's good. <laughs> Um, kids' church, we will have children's church after um, a lot of things happen today. So, after the worship. But before worship, a lot of things are going to happen. We have kids' church from um, 4 to 8 and from 8 to 12. So, uh, and from 0 to 3, there's a place at the back where you can watch. You all know this. Um, Intercession, the same as every, every week. We pray this week for Shafar Utrecht and Nijmegen at 7 o'clock via Zoom. If you want to join, please um, ask me or Darkan. Then we can give you the Zoom link. Then you can join. And then um, before, ser before the sermon, we always pray together. So you're welcome to join. You don't need to tell us you want to come. You can just pitch. Small group. Anyone who's not in a small group yet, I really want to say to you, it's a great place to be. It, um, um, I think when, when, when the first time when you enter a church and you think church people must be all these good, kind people, and then later on you realize, mm, there's a, some, some of them that you don't like or you cannot get along so well, small group is a good place to practice. <laughs> And God has given us different gifts, and it's such a blessing how, how we learn to celebrate the differences that God has given us. A small group, perfect place to grow. Then Freedom Encounter, Encounter 4, that is one of my favorites. It's really um, such a blessing that, God, that Jesus died, that we may be set free. And often we do not understand how these principles work, it works for everyone, and please come. Um, I'll teach you what are open doors and um, how you can get rid of it, and then you can be a blessing to the next person. It's not that you need to continuously come to Encounter 4. Once done, you have it, you know how to do it, and you can keep your, your doors closed. Um, are you new at church? Then you're welcome. We want to have a connect evening with a light meal at our house. Please let us know if you would like to connect with us in that evening and uh, we will share a little more what is this church about and yeah, just to let you feel more at home. So please contact me or Darkan. You're very welcome. Then Shafar Etrach's first mission is to Zambia on the 15th August to the 1st of September. Um, if you are interested in joining this mission, please let us know. Me or Darkan or Gerda. I don't see um, Ariane here. And Christoph, they are kind of in charge of this mission. It's, um, it will change your life. Missions always change your life. You think you're gonna be such a blessing for other people. But you know, God works in you. And then you realize, I'm different when I come back. There's just something special on missions. Great, and then join us for coffee and tea afterwards. The offering message what I've got today is coming from Zechariah 8, verses 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days ten men from every language of the nation shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man, saying, 
let us go with you, for we've heard that God is with you. And when I got this verse, I thought, now what must I do with it? And I had a look at it again, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to translate it. I'm going to make it the new Utrecht Living Translation. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in 2024, 10 men. Now, 10 men means it's everybody. Everybody from every language of nations in Utrecht shall grasp the sleeve of a person of Chauffeur Utrecht and says, let us go with you because we've heard that God is with you. Do you like that translation? But that's what we as church would like to be. And that's what we as church would like to, to radiate to the outside. That the people in Utrecht are saying, those who are working with you, those who are seeing you, those who are visiting us over here, we haven't got visitors today, but that they say, we've heard, God is with you. We can see it, God is with you. We want to know more about it. Please tell us. Now, how do I bring that to the offering message? We as a church, if we want to do that, we are needing funds for that. Funds that we can rent a church, that we can buy the coffee, that we can offer the encounters, and so on and so on. So if you are making offerings, a tithe, you're basically saying, I'm supporting this. That people are going to be living together over here as a family and that other people can come. And that they say, let us go with you, Chauffeur Utrecht, because we've heard that God is with you. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for that huge privilege, what we've got, that we know that we've got a relationship with you, Father. And that relationship changed something on the inside with us but it's radiating to the outside. And Father, I pray that we can be those people wherever we go, that they can see us and that they can say, I want to go with you. I can see you've got God with you. And Father, I pray, Lord, that we can all contribute, that we as a church, as Chauffeur Utrecht, can be something like that. It's not easy. We've got to change on the inside. But Father, we also need funds so that we can carry on with this. And Father, I pray, Lord, that it will be easy for us to give of our time, to give of our money, that we can carry on and be what you want us to be as Chauffeur Utrecht. We glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to give anything, there is a QR code on the info table in the time cell where we're going to have afterwards the coffee and the tea. It's also a QR code which is over there. The banking details are on the website so you can also transfer if you want to. And as I just explained before the sermon to somebody, if you transfer to our bank account, if you put your name to it, we can add it to your contributions to the church, even if it's an offering. And then you can get some of that money back again from the friendly Dutch government, from the receiver of revenue they give some of that money then back to you. So your offering is also being recognized over there. Thank you. And now we're going to come to a part which is a little bit different as what we've got normally in the sermon and I'm asking Bem and Myla and Bella as well to come to the front. Bema Myla, they uh, approach, approached us with the request that they wanted to renew their wedding vows, but they wanted to do it in church on a Sunday. They're all legally married. They got married in December 2015, so they married already for eight years and four months. This is what Bem quickly calculated before the sermon. But they never made the wedding vows to each other and to God. And we are actually privileged as a congregation that today that we could be witness of it, that they are getting married. 
Now, I'm not going to do an altar call and say, okay, who also wants to get married, please come. No, I'm not going to do that. It's just the two of them today. And it's a privilege that we can be part of it. And it's a privilege that, that you are in the church and that you say, come, brothers, sisters, we're all family. Come, be witness of the vows that we're going to make to each other. The marriage is a covenant. Now, the covenant is not just an agreement. The covenant is, is much deeper than an agreement because God is involved over there. In Genesis 2, verses 24, it also says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and shall become one flesh. You can have a whole sermon about this verse because what the world is doing, it's not according to this sequence which is over here. They're doing it the different way around. But I'm not going to spend time on that. But what I would like to say is, is that the marriage is the first institution, if I can put it that way, what God ordained. And the most important one, I think, in life. And that is a marriage between a husband and a wife. Because a husband and a wife are making a family. And a happy family are making a good community. And a good community makes a good country. So it's a very important what we see over here today. And as God is involved, it's a covenant. And today we're going to be witness of it, that they are going to make that and renew that covenant towards each other. But if we make a covenant for God, then we also want to make sure that God is part of it and that they recognize God. So the first question that I'm going to ask to you, Ben, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? My love, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Awesome. Then the basis is there, and then we can start with the, with the vows. Also, you see, also need glasses. <laughs> I, I Rime Evaristo, hereby renew my vow to you as my wedded wife to have and to hold from this day forward in prosperity and adversity, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish and to honor in the Lord. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Till death do us part, according to God's holy law, and this is my solemn vow. I, my Lady Lumban Evaristo, hereby renew my vow to you as my wedded husband, to help. And to honor in the Lord, your people will be my people, and your God will be my God, till death do us part, according to God's holy law. And this is my solemn vow. Thank you. And I'm inviting. And you would like to pray along, then I'm asking you to please come forward that you can pray along with us, that we can speak a blessing over Bem and Myla. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we can speak a blessing over Bema and Myla, that we can bless them, that they can be a blessing for other people as a family, as a couple, also specifically in the new chapter what they're going in, Father, that they will receive the strength of the Holy Spirit to be in this life. Bless them, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that um, what I see is, is just so beautiful. It's you are celebrating. You are celebrating their covenant with you, that they vow before you that they will take each other as husband and wife, Father. And um, that's why me and Dad can have to renew our wedding, wedding vows many years back. So, Father, thank you. I bless them. They will be a blessing when they come in. They will be a blessing when they go out. They will be a blessing wherever they are. 
And now that they are going to immigrate to um, America, they will be a blessing there. Father, thank you that we may be part of this and that we can celebrate them and just know they have walked the walk and, and they have learned so many things and they've grown so many times and it was, sometimes it was so tough, sometimes it was, it was good. But Father, all in all, they honor and glorify you and they love you. And I bless this. Nothing will come and steal this. It will always stay with you. I pray grace and mercy over you too, that you will have grace and mercy for each other as God has grace, has grace and mercy for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for them in my life. We want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity to renew their vows. And by implication, what they are saying is that they commit this marriage before you. In your word in Ecclesiastes, you make us understand that a three-stranded cord cannot be easily broken. And so, Father, we want to pray that it, as you dwell within their marriage, you dwell within their household, we pray for that unity that cannot be broken in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh Father, Lord, for the wisdom of a husband and a wife and a daughter to run a godly home so that men may see the good works that chance out of it and give glory to you. We ask for your blessings upon them. In their going out and in their coming in, bless them and make their marriage, O oh Father, Lord, become a beacon of hope, one which we will all look at and say, for this is the doing of the Lord and is marvelous in our sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, we just uh, say, Father, thank you for this couple. Father, thank you for their uh, boldness to stand here and just to renew their vows. Father, that the world may see what marriage means. Father, that the world may see um, that you've called us to um, in a lifelong commitment towards each other. Father, not as the world sees relationships as always this fluffy, beautiful thing, but that marriage is hard work sometimes and it's commitment towards each other and it's um, devotion towards each other. Father, thank you that that uh, they can go out and, and show this image that um, yeah, they are prepared to sacrifice for each other and that they will yeah, that they will yeah, best be on, honoring each other and that they will uh, yeah, that they will just show you, show the world what, what it means uh, to be married father thank you that you're sending them to a new place father thank you that uh, you will use them there in that, that community father thank you that um, in this household uh, that the kids can grow up with a mother and father together and that uh, that you bless that family, Father. Father, thank you that uh, uh, yeah, thank you that we can send them with a good heart, knowing that uh, they're going to make a difference in the community, that you're going to place them there as well. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you in the name of Jesus, that we can come before you in Jesus' name. Father, we want Bella Myla, Bem, we want to bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and ask God to protect you as a person, and bless, uh, bless your union, so that it, any attack from the evil one will be bounced off and will be quenched, and that your union will be an example of Christ in the church, so that everyone will see what God has done for us, and they will know him and know him better and that you will know him and know him better. Be blessed uh, when you go out of here, you and your children and your children's children forever. In Jesus' name. Father, we want to thank you also for what Bella has been bringing to the kids' church, Lord. And it's just been a, a product of what her parents do for her, Lord. And the way that she prays, we just see that she is close to you, Lord, and it's such a blessing to see. And we pray the same for her brother, Lord, that the two of them will grow up always in your ways, Lord, and that you will, that you will guide my line them to bring the children up to follow you all of their days, as we can see in Bella already, Lord. We thank you for that, and we pray a blessing over them as they go.
Lord Jesus, I also want to say thank you, Lord, for this couple that you've brought together, Lord, and that they're, that they're bound together in your, your unity, Lord, that you, that you brought them together. And, Lord, we bring them before you and we pray your precious blood over them, Lord, that they, they, they might go wherever they are, Lord, that knowing that you walk with them, Lord, and that your blood guards over them and their children, Lord. And Father, I pray a blessing on them where they go. Father, and you know, like we've said that marriage isn't easy, Lord, but we pray that they might always turn their, their eyes to their first love, Lord, that be you, Lord. And they but see the love that you have for us, Lord, in each other. And, and Father, I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. With a normal wedding, then I will say, can I introduce you, Mr. and Mrs. Evaristo? But they're already married for so many years, so it's not applicable today. And then the other thing of you can kiss the brides, you can do it at home, bam. <laughs> it's awesome that we could be part of it. We're going to send you in a few weeks' time, and then we're going to pray over you again. Be blessed. stand with us as we worship. Congratulations one more time, Bem and Myla. At least we are happy as a, as a band that our fellow band member uh, has blessed or renew his vows. May God bless your marriage. Amen. When Renee was praying for you guys, she mentioned something about grace and mercy that the Lord will make you give each other grace and mercy and grace was something which I received whilst we were preparing for to today's uh, band and this is Apostle Paul speaking in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 to 11 and he says that by but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace toward me was not in vain on the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. So when we look at all that Paul did, in this text he's saying that nothing was done by himself, and everything was by God's grace. And for Paul to make that statement is huge because he wasn't supposed to even be an apostle. But he said the grace of God is what made him who he was. And I just want you to rise up with us and, and let's, let's worship and let's, let's appreciate the amazing grace that Christ has given to us. Because in John chapter 1 verse 17, he says, For grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And so if we are all standing here, it's only by the amazing grace of God. Amen. Amen.
done with sinners and sins. Heal the blind and lost in the name. Even now he sent out this. Behold this. He who chose the criminal's hand. Paid with blood to settle our death. Bury that I see rose to life. Behold him, Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the roaring lion. Oh, be still and behold him, Jesus, our first. God, the reason, yeah. Oh, be still and behold it. Behold it. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of oh my. Worthy, worthy, worthy to receive all praise. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy, worthy, worthy to receive
Uh, Father, what a privilege it is to continue in fellowship with the children now. Father, thank you for the privilege you have in sharing your word with them. Father, thank you that you call us as children to, um, as, as that uh, we will have this boldness to run to you and to sit in your lap and to, uh, and to speak to you. Father, I pray for us in this uh, afternoon as we get together as kids' church that um, we would understand the things that we talk about and that you would be with us and that your Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us. Amen. When we hear the word relationship, we always think immediately about a husband and a wife and what we today could see also in a marriage, a renewal of the wedding vows between them and Myla. But relationship is much deeper than this. And this is what I feel that God wants to speak to us about this afternoon. It's actually not my best subject, so I was also learning as I was making the sermon. For Renee, it's stuff which is very easy. For me, a little bit more difficult, but let's pray first. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you are our Father, that we can have that relationship with you through Jesus Christ. That we already could hear today from two people what said, yes, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That we can also be over here today, Father, as people who say, yes, I can call you Father through Jesus Christ. And I can come to you this Father, and that we can come to you as a congregation this afternoon, Father, that we can receive from you what you want to share with us. And we know that if we are speaking to a person which is very close to our heart, then we make time. We set time aside because we don't want to miss anything. We switch off the radio or close the door or anything like that because we want to focus, we want to hear what you want to share. And so I pray, Father, that everything what kept us busy, maybe a flat tire or car on the road or whatever the case may be which kept us busy before we came over here that we can set it aside Father and that we can focus and that we can receive from you we know that the enemy continuously wants to distract us but there we use the authority what we've got in the name of Jesus Christ and we say you are not going to steal anything word this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ that each and every word is going to go where you want to have it to, to go, Father. And we pray that the Holy Spirit is going to make our hearts receive, receivable for what you want to share with us this afternoon, Father. We don't want to miss anything. We glorify your name. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. God has got a plan with relationships. And it's maybe something that we say, now we, we do not really know too much about it, but God has got a plan with relationships, what we've seen with Ben and Myla as well. But in ourselves, we also have got that urge to mix with other people. We want to do that. If we are locked up in a room with somebody else for 24 hours, we are going to start talking to that person. Are we? Yes. We are all going to start speaking to that person. The only one who I can remember who was isolated and didn't want to speak to anyone was the grandfather from Heidi, but at the final end, he spoke to the granddaughter as well. And in this world, we all have got relationships with different people. And relationships means that we've got connections with them, we can call it links, we can call it associations, we can call it whatever we want to call it. The first one is, of course, very logic, and that is the one which is the family. When you were born, you immediately had relationships. You haven't spoken a word, but you already had a mum and a dad, you already had a uncle and an aunt, 
You already grandfather, grandmother, you all had those relationships. They were immediately you were there. Without speaking a word. You maybe cried, just one cry, and you immediately had that relationship. Then we also have got relationships through our study and work what we're doing. It's basically meaning our daily activities. Those are not always our best relationships because certain people we wouldn't like to invite to our house for a meal. A day is more than enough. But they are there. We've got relationships with them. And sometimes we also have got relationships with people for where you're staying. It could be the building where you're staying, it could be the street, it could be the town, and it could even be the country. But all of them, all those relationships <coughs> have got a certain length. They differ from that, how long, but they also have got a certain depth, how deep they are. How deep are you going into your conversations? And there's one book that I would like to re recommend if you want to read something about re re relationships. It's a very important book. It's a book where you can buy everywhere. Uh, the beautiful thing about it is that the writer of that book, he created you. That's the Bible. Because the Bible is telling us about relationships. Relationships with God and relationships with other people. If we take a look at the Bible very broadly, from Genesis to Revelations, it's about a relationship. God created heaven and earth. He created you as well. He created me. That's where the relationship starts with God and us. And if we take a look at the last book of the Revelation, it says how that relationship is going to continue after we've left this earth. Isn't that a better book? This is the best book we can get. Read it. It will tell you about the relationships. But also if we're going to read up certain scriptures, we will find it continuously speaks about relationship. And if there's one verse which is really telling us how close God wants to be with us. It's the well-known John 3, 16. God loved the world so much, he loved us so much, that he sent his son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. So there he says he wants to be in that relationship with us. In a broad look, we can see that God wants to be with us. And if we go into the verses, it's just confirmation again about a bigger picture. And the relationship is about God and us, God and his creation. God created the heaven and the earth, he created it for us. A beautiful verse which tells us how involved God is in our creation is Psalm 139 verses 13 and 14. You were formed, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. If we sometimes mention this to the people on a Thursday evening when we evangelize, that we say God was already involved in your life. In the Bible it says he was already involved with knitting you together in your mother's womb. Then they have a look at it and they say, you're nuts. What are you saying now? But the Bible is saying it. This is how God is already involved in the relationship with us. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, we can say that. God doesn't make rubbish. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are a creation by God. Marvelous are your works, and David speaking then to God, and that my soul knows very well. And that knowing, that is that Hebrew word yada, it's that diligently knowledge, that deep knowledge, you know it, it's in your heart, that this work is marvelous. 
What's also there is that it's not only a relationship between God and the creation, but also what we've got is being part of his creation. Because God first wants to that we should have a relationship with him. That is the most important part. And if we understand that relationship with him, then it's so much easier to have a relationship with the people around us. If we read John 13 verses 34 and 35, which were some of the last words which Jesus mentioned, so they are important words. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. To you also love one another. And by this you will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. That you are recognized, but that's a person who loves another person. That people can see it, but he has got He's got love for somebody else. Now, loving over here doesn't mean that we've got to compromise. It doesn't mean that if I love my neighbor and he's a Muslim, it doesn't mean that I've got to compromise my belief in God to be acceptable for him. I love him, but I'm not changing my relationship with God. That's going to remain the same. Beautiful symbol of it is, of course, the cross, the vertical one, and I've mentioned it before, the most important one, our relationship with God. And once that relationship is there, it's so much easier for the horizontal one to work because then we understand. If we only have got to do the horizontal one and we've got to carry it out of our own strength, at a certain time we're going to get tired and we're going to drop it. We won't be able to do it, but if we can hook it in, into that, that vertical love, then it's not ourselves who is doing it, but then we are allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us. Now, if we've got a relationship, we've got to communicate with each other. We've got to talk. Because if we do not talk, then there's no relationship. And yes, I see a few people nodding over here, so they are well aware of it. And I know it in my marriage as well. <laughs> I cannot stop talking to Rene. It will be suicidal. The deeper the communication, the deeper the relationship. If we've got just a, on the horizon top of a communication with somebody, we're not having a deep relationship. There are five different levels. The first one is the cliche conversation. We've got bad weather, it's raining. It's very easy to say that. But don't forget that such a statement what you're making could start a conversation. I know of a guy here in Utrecht. He started a conversation on the station here in Utrecht with a lady like that. He said, we've got bad weather today. As he was standing smoking a cigarette, and waiting for the train to come. They started speaking to each other. They went into the train, they shared information, they made contact, he stopped smoking, he got saved, and they got married. So do not ignore that cliche conversation. It can go much deeper. For those who are not married yet, it's maybe a way of starting a conversation. The next one is, you're reporting about facts. You're reporting facts about others, but you're a nice distance. You don't give your own opinion about it. You don't give any judgment about it, but you're just reporting. You're telling others that someone else has said, and you don't commit to it, and you don't say anything of how you're feeling about it. It's very safe very safe to do. Then the third one is, then you start in with your ideas and your judgments. And this is what you will hear many times in the bus as well, that the people will say, according to me, or I think, and this is where it comes, where it gets a little bit deeper. Then they are adding to it of what their own ideas is. 
and what their own decisions were. And now we come to the fourth one, and that's for me always a difficult one, because it has got the word feeling in it. And if they ask me, how do you feel about it, it's very difficult for me to answer such a question. And in our family, they make a joke about this. Don't ask that question, because I'm not be able to answer on it. But then the feeling and the emotions are coming. And then we are sharing how we feel about it. We're sharing about the facts, about the ideas, about the judgments. And we're telling other people how it affects us. How do we feel about it? This was bad to hear. I was excited about that. And so on and so on. So that is, that's the fourth level. But then we come to the last one. And this is the most important one. Completely of a complete emotional and a personal communication. And it's absolutely honest. You're not telling any lies over there. It's open. You share whatever you want to share. And you share your heart. What is on your heart at that moment? You share it with the other person. Those who are married and those who got married again today, they must probably can also agree with that. They say, this is the type of communication which actually is needed between husband and wife. You're communicating with each other. And at the same time, you will also that people are, are speaking into each other's lives. If we come to that first cliche conversation, if that person would come in, the weather is not that good, and then he would reply and say, well, I, I think you should put on some other shoes because I don't like it. And you immediately won't accept that type of it. You say, well, I don't want to have a conversation with that person anymore. It's my decision what I want to put on. But if you come to a person where you've got that close relationship, that deeper relationship, and that person says something to you, you hear it, you think about it, and you maybe react on it. But it's the other way around as well. You can also speak into that person's life. And you can make a difference over there. You're sharing your heart. And if we take a look at the Psalms, David, each and every time, he's talking about his heart, his heart, his heart. He once was talking about God's heart and he was talking about his own heart because that was important, that that heart-to-heart -heart relationship was over there. Psalm 24, verses 3, and six, three to 6 this is a question which we find on a few different places in the Bible as well. Who is actually ready? Who can come to God? Who may ascend into the hills of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. And what a pure heart means over there is this. It's on the inside. It's not just outward. It's not just ceremonies and symbols and things like that which are telling what is happening on the inside, but it's coming out of the heart. And it, it's actually strange that out of a wicked heart, out of a sinful heart, that we are communicating with God. But that God wants to cleanse our heart. He wants to clean it. So who cares who may stand in his holy place? He has got clean hands and a pure heart, which means that we can share our heart with God, that we are prepared, like we just now spoke about that emotional and personal communication, that we can open our heart to God. He who has got clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol and has not sworn deceitfully, not sworn, which means you've not deceived anyone around you, but you're really true. You're true to God and to the people around you. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. You're in a right standing with God. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. And then that word, Salah, We've been speaking about it just now with the intercession as well. It means stop, think about it. So what David is saying over here is stop, think about it. 
Think about it of what just now has been said because it's important. You cannot just run over it and carry on with the psalm. You just stop. Psalm 139 is also talking about the heart. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Know my heart. How should I actually explain it? It, it, it? God knows our heart. But what God, what David is asking over here is, is that he's saying is to, to the Lord, show me my heart. So what he's being secretly prepared to come to the Lord and say, Lord, if there's anything on my heart which is still not correct, be so kind and show me that I can address it, that I can sort it out. But there's another on that as well, which means that we also can go to the Lord and that we can ask, Lord, what is on your heart for me? What is on your heart? And that's really that heart-to-heart connection. And I'm already now at the summary for the sermon, so it's not a long sermon today. If we take a relationship It will work when two people have the same intention to grow together. So if you've got two people who've got the same intention to grow together, then the relationship is working. It's the same between us and God. If we and God have both got the same intention, then the relationship can work. If we take a look at from God's side, He wants to have a relationship with us. He's clear in the scripture. He wants to have a relationship with us. I think many people would have said, when the Adam and Eve story happened over there, would have said, just cancel it, write it off, create a new earth, let's try again, forget about it. But God didn't walk away from His creation. Shows again, he wants to be with us. And God wants to have that heart-to-heart connection with us. He wants to have that deep relationship with us. He wants to know what is on our heart, which he knows anyway, but that we are prepared to share it with him. And that we also can hear what is on, on his heart. The other side of the relationship is, is our side. And then we know that our side is not always what it should be. And when I was busy with this part, I was seeing a picture of, and it it tells you maybe a little bit how old I am. You had of those type of balls, there was a type of a circle in it, and it had a type of a knob on the top. And if you pressed it, it started turning around. And if you pressed it a few times, then it started spinning. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. And it that ball was just spinning around. The more you actually pressed it, the more it was spinning around. And then I felt that the Lord was saying, that's exactly how people are sometimes busy. They are spinning around their own world. They are so busy with themselves, but they're not open to come into that relationship that I'm waiting for, what I want to. Because God wants us that we should stand still. Salah, and that we just should think and communicate with God and not spinning around and busy with actually nothing, but just around ourselves. God wants to have that heart to heart connection. And it's very important that we should have a connection with God alone. The next picture, which I borrowed from Encounter 4. And uh, thank you for that I could borrow with Renee. But on the other side, I also want to recommend it. If you haven't done Encounter 4, go and do Encounter 4. Because that's helping you also with sorting out maybe relationships which are not correct. Because you can see that circle. And you can see the person is with God in that circle. That is the relationship what we should have on this earth. And all other relationships, which is family, work, 
even your husband and your wife should be outside. God should be first. And through God, you've got a relationship with all the other people. If you've got time, continue of continue, but um, attend that encounter for. It's really going to help you with relationships, specifically with God. If there's anything in that relationship with God which is hindering you, that it can be addressed, that it can be sorted out, and that you can be what God wants you to be. God loves us. He loves each and every one of us. And what God has been saying to Jesus when he was baptized, he's saying that to each and every one of us. Matthew 3, 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. The creator of heaven and earth who wants to be in a relationship with you is saying that to each and every one of us. How beautiful that is. How beautiful that we can know this is how God is thinking about us. God said exactly the same again. A little bit later, we can read it in Matthew 17, verses 5. Jesus went on to the mountain. He had Peter, James, and John with him. And when he came onto the mountain, suddenly Moses and Elijah were there as well. And then Peter immediately wanted to build, they call it a tabernacle, one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And then, and then it says over here in Matthew 17, verses 5, And while he, which is Peter, then was speaking, because he was trying to organize something, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Exactly the same as what have been said with the baptism. But now there's an additional word, two words added to it. Hear him. So what is he saying? What is God saying then to John, Peter, and James? Listen. Listen to Jesus. Moses and Elijah. Moses was seen as a prophet, but he said in Deuteronomy, there's a greater prophet who's going to come. Elijah has how many times prophesied of Jesus who was going to come? Jesus is say, of God is saying over there to the three, listen to Jesus. Not to say, do not listen to Moses or Elijah anymore, but there's nothing more important than to listen to Jesus. Because Jesus is your perfect example. Jesus, you can follow him. Honor him because he's more than Moses and Elijah. Hear to him. Listen to him. Speak to him. Communicate with him. Heart to heart. Be in a relationship with him. God wants to be in a relationship with us. And God wants us to be in a relationship with other people. But we need God and the first and the most important is that we should have a heart-to-heart -heart connection with God. There's nothing else which can work. We really have got to be open. We've got to tell God. He knows it anyway, but we've got to share it to Him. And we can ask Him as well, Lord, is there still anything what I've got to bring to You that I can clean my heart and that I can have that contact with You When they asked Jesus, what is the biggest command? Love the Lord with your heart. Yes, with your soul and with your strength and with your mind. But the first thing, with your heart. And this is the relationship, what God is looking for. Let's pray. Father, 
we want to thank you. Thank you again who you are. That you're reminding us again this afternoon that you want to be in a relationship with each and every person on this earth. And thank you, Father, that you want to have that heart-to-heart connection with us, Father, that we can be totally open. And maybe it's something that we're not really used to, to communicate on that level, Father, but that we will have the courage to bring everything to you. But that we also can become quiet and that we can ask you, Lord, what is on your heart for me? And that we can listen to you. This afternoon you may be here and you say, but you're talking about a relationship with God, but, but I haven't got a relationship with God. I never had a relationship with God. I never accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I never accepted God as a creator and the Holy Spirit as my helper. And if the Holy Spirit is stirring you this afternoon, and maybe you're here in the church or maybe you're watching or listening afterwards, and you feel that this afternoon you want to start that relationship with God, you want to have that heart-to-heart relationship with God, you've never had a relationship with Him before, and you want to make that decision today, then I'm asking you that you can raise your hand now, that we can pray along with you. of us are also aware that the relationship that we've got with you, Father, is not at level five. It's maybe level three, maybe level two. We're not having that heart-to-heart connection with you, Father. And as all eyes are closed, if you're here this afternoon and, and, and you're listening to it and you feel that the Holy Spirit is stirring your heart, that you've got to deepen your relationship with God, and you want to make that decision this afternoon, then I'm asking you boldly, raise your hand that we can, that I can pray for you. If you feel that you've got to deepen your relationship with God. Thank you, Father. You see those hands of those people who are, who are coming actually towards you, Father, who say, Lord, here I am. And if they already make that step forward, Father, then we know that, that the healing is going to come. Father, I pray that there's going to be a hunger for them to hear more from you, to have that heart-to-heart connection with you, Father. Thank you. Thank you that I can speak a blessing over each and every person who raised their hand, Father, that they're going to, that going to seek you, that they're going to have that deeper relationship with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you loved us first. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have two songs. But I feel that there's a little bit more. If you're here this afternoon and you say, but I'm battling to hear God's voice. It's difficult for me here to hear God's voice. And you say, I'm eager to learn to hear God's voice. I feel I am communicating, but God is not communicating back to me. I'm sharing my heart, but I cannot hear God's heart. And if you hear this afternoon, and you say, I would like to, to hear more from God, from His heart, And as we're going to sing those two songs, I'm going to ask you, the male can come to me, the female can come to Renee, that we can just bless you, that we can anoint you, that we can speak a blessing over you, that we can pray that, that, that the door will open up, that you can communicate with God, that you can hear what is on God's heart. Because there's nothing more beautiful that the Creator is going to share with you what is His heart for you because he's got a plan for each and every one of you if you need any other prayer there's going to be two stations over there feel free to go for prayer over there I'm just asking you're already seated over there I see that Anton and Lindy already they will if there's any uh, any other prayer what you need but please come during the two songs that after the songs that we can enjoy a coffee and a tea and some cake
which a couple brought who made some vows today. Have a blessed week. And if you are spinning around yourself, stop. Communicate with God. Share your heart and listen to His heart. Thank you. Will you join us as we stand? grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears we live our precious in the grace of peace we are first God, my Savior, has ransomed me like a flood. His mercy reigns on ending now. Amazing grace. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, As promise good to me, is worth my hope secures. He will my shield and portion me as long as life and you. My chains are set free my God my Savior has ransomed me like a flood his mercy reign on and in amazing grace my chains are soon dissolve like snow the sand forbear to shine but God who call me here below will be forever mine. will be forever
misty water Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Covenant of foe Your love is enduring Through the winter rain Beyond the horizon Mercy for today Faithful you have been Faithful you will be You pled yourself to me This is why I sing your praise Will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You father the orphan. Kindness makes us so. You show the weakness. Strength becomes our own. You make me like you. Clothing me in white. In ruth in your ashes. You will have your bride. Free of all at gift. Red of all a shame and known by a true name. This is why I sing your praise. Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, and there will be praise, and you will be praised. When angels are saying, We sing, Worthy are you, Lord, you will be praised, you will be praised. When angels are saying, This is why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my So, Father, we just want to thank you and bless your name for the relationship that you first chose with us. And we commit ourselves before you and we ask that may you help us each and every day for us to strive to have that deeper relationship with you. There is more than just being saved. And that is what your grace is able to do that not only will we be saved, but we will be used graciously and mightily for your works. We pray that awaken our spirit and may each and every one of us draw more closer to you than before. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. So, there will be coffee and tea. Have a blessed week.